This video is about me saying thank you so much. We have reached a thousand subscribers and created a YouTube channel based around Welsh, British stuff and languages. What led to me creating this channel? I want to show you that journey if you will let me. Here's our time machine. Let's go. From my earliest memories in Texas, I remember being pulled to Britain. There is no pain. Robert Greene called it primal curiosity. What fascinated us before we felt social pressure as children. My grandpa's atlas, when I was about four years old, maybe three, the shapes of this island mesmerized me. The contours of Britain landscape. This was my primal curiosity. And I heard Sean Connery speak and did not know who he was. I heard the Beatles sing, but I did not know who they were. Their voices stayed with me. I would run my hands over maps of the British Isles, lost in them for hours. By seven years old, I was aware of it, but not aware of what. When I saw the Prince of Wales on television and asked, where is it that men dress like that? Where is that? This pulling towards Britain, often I barely noticed it was there at all. I was in Texas growing up in a broken home, but echoes of Britain filtered through it. A way out, a way from the oil refineries, ghettos and cowboys, the littered streets and dusty shacks. That primal curiosity seed changed as I changed, growing with me as I grew. Until one day I knew, still a boy, saying, I don't know what this is, this seed, but I will hold on to it and let it grow until I am an old man. Check this out and still have this from my earliest memories, no matter the cost, I'll do it. No one knew I stayed up late to watch Yes, Minister. Our office is pro-Europe. Or that when my mother watched Are You Being Served, I actually liked it. And so I found King Arthur and Bond, James Bond. In Texas, the British Isles seems as one thing to a naive boy. The seed, though, was a journey, remember? And Sinead O'Connor's Irish voice has never truly left me from about age eight. The cranberries later, actually, too. Since my mother was an encyclopedia of film knowledge, I found Rob Roy, Braveheart. Chariots of Fire, Highlander, Casino Royale, the original of course, Mary Poppins, First Night, An American Werewolf in London, H.G. Wells' Time Machine, Macbeth. Anything set in Britain or with British actors, I was absorbed and immersed in it. I wanted to learn about this place any way that I could in my limited world. By 14 years old, my primal curiosity had grown over 10 years, and I saw Britain changing now, from afar. I began to find British role models. Through the corner of my eyes over the globe, and I now could see Britain's joys how it felt sadness too. And I heard people say the word Wales, the faintest echo of it. For the first time, not as Prince Charles's title, the Prince of Wales, that eloquent and elegant man, but what was this place called Wales? For the time being, Wales barely bleeped on my radar. How could I discern different countries even at this point within those far off lands? My adolescence bloomed with British culture and music. Chumba Wamba, Blur, Oasis, Queen, 
stereophonics, the verb Travis, which echoed in me deeply as a young gay man. And somewhere in there, super furry animals with glimpses of a new language, Welsh. I began to see Britain through their songs. I began watching their music videos to see what this place looked like. This society with its own thing. I didn't know what it was. And I found an urban Britain where my not having a car did not matter. Where I could see a doctor for free. Wow. Now and then a brief image got through America's media wall of Westminster. Men speaking in Parliament in the finest clothes. Aspiration lifted my heart just looking at it. And I remember being made fun of for saying I wanted to be like Tony Blair. But my life was not there. Texas was far away. And I ran away as a young gay man in my mid-teens. Became homeless later and found angry British 1970s punk rock. The buzzcocks, the vibrators, the sex pistols, the clash, the vandals, the jam, and others and American variants of their styles. I gave myself a mohawk. But I did drugs. Drugs are bad for your dreams, don't do them. I got in trouble. And so I began traveling across America for a while. I lost hold of that child's grace. That thing I held on to since at least three or four years old. Primal curiosity was falling away from me after 15 years. But the flame of that original childhood curiosity found a new thing. Thankfully. Kamraig. The Welsh language. The journey undertaken with me and the Welsh language deserves an entire video of its own, which I don't have time for in this video. I traveled around the United States not really knowing where I wanted to go or who I wanted to be. Something had reignited this primal curiosity. It was Welsh, allowing me to get back on track onto the journey of holding on to that moment with the atlas and growing a trajectory from that continuously across my life. And over the next few years, until I get to Seattle and traveling around the United States, learning Welsh at my leisure. Britain under Blair meant I could marry a man. What a wonderful place, from my view. I moved to Seattle so I could be close as possible to Canada and the British Commonwealth, which would launch me across the Atlantic Ocean, easier than coming directly from America. My Welsh dictionary went with me everywhere now and I... It was a lodestar. The language. And if you grow a thing with your honest primal curiosity for long enough, the world or the heavens will make a way come to you. And I met a beautiful man from England named Mark, who gave me a copy of the Mabinogion, the ancient Welsh tales. My love for him was honest, it was genuine. And in 2008, we came to Britain, moving here in 2009. I have been back only four days since. I knew I was home. Coming here with Mark was magical. Exploring London, one of Earth's great cities, and the architecture of empire. Brighton and Bristol, the Isle of Wight, the home counties. I began to read Welsh novels, however, and to discover politics, new landscapes, and old things in them. The Liberal Democrats were new. Politics here in Britain could move beyond being just socialist or conservative. This idea was the most radical thing I had ever thought. Nick Clegg became a role model. And slowly, all of Britain's three main parties grew on me not just the Liberal Democrats, as new roads to explore, new kinds of Britishness, new kinds of Welshness, as I read more about Wales. 
and Clyde Drumry, the Nationalists. I found a Welsh language under threat from over-tourism and a hatred of Welsh so deep in the English culture that Welsh is the one language in all the globe they refuse to borrow words from, though it was next door for all of its history, such as the depth of how little respect they gave the Welsh culture. And in this I found myself part of a struggle against that hatred to keep the Welsh nation alive. Still, giving life to me, the same seed I found at three years old, it presented me with a new problem. How can Welsh's Brythonic Britishness and the Anglo-Britishness, which is so English, coexist? Why did the English hate the language so much? They use more Aborigine words than they do Welsh in their language when being next to the Welsh for so long. Through Welsh, I saw the Cornish language gave my last name, my actual last name, and that the English state had taken our language from us. Why did they hate the Cornish nation? I don't know. And my curiosity wanted to learn. I began going to Wales in Gwynedd the Beautiful precisely because it is so Welsh speaking. I studied this language at university. It was hard for me to understand the English in Wales who came and behaved as if it was the same culture as England. Why? How could you conceive of Wales being the same thing as England? It was difficult to me at this point to even grasp. So different was my perspective of Britain from when I had began unable to see Sinead O'Connor apart from England as a boy. Anyway, in Gwynedd I found the works of an aristocratic Welsh poetry tradition which lasted over a millennium. Far longer than that which I focused on since I wanted to see the British side of Welshness, the Britons. And I asked, am I Welsh or British, or am I Welsh and British? If I am also British, then what kind of British am I? What a road do we take from here? This lifelong path I had taken had shown me there never has been and never can be one Britain. Oneness is the opposite of Britishness. Maybe it was fate. I got a scholarship to Cambridge where I studied these various British cultures. How they formed in a medieval context. Cambridge also allowed me new ways to see myself within a British context and Welshness. And I began looking at how French and Latin shaped Wales and Britain. And I found Britain has always been full of different languages. And this Cambridge let me replant my primal curiosity into a soil of British languages, plural. Scottish Gaelic, Dutch, French, Latin, Cornish. And I went back to Nick Clegg's ideas of Britishness. And I went up to Scotland to listen to the Liberal Democrats. By the way, Edinburgh is the most beautiful city in the British Isles. There is no contest at all. Here I found the British Liberal tradition and I began to change again. Cambridge is a temple to our civilization's values, heritage and architecture. It is as British as it gets. I went to Peter House, perhaps the most Tory college of them all, and I learned about the Anglican side of Britishness, stemming from the Reformation and read over the history of the Conservative Party. 
but in this time I found a mid 20th century Scottish liberal, Joe Grimmond, who I studied and emulated. In 2017, 30 years on from finding my primal curiosity in my grandpa's atlas, I came back to Wales with the intention of never moving again. While the old Jewish proverb is that God laughs at your plans. I came to Cardiff, my country's capital, yet I found an emptiness. What else was there? My identity ripped open in conflictions between Welsh and British. How else could I water this seed after 30 years and keep my promise to see what my primal curiosity grows into, to never give it up? How could I keep it growing? I had no answer. And my life in Cardiff fell apart without meaning. I couldn't pay the rent. Back to Gwynedd it was. This time in the mountains of Eriri. And I fell, jumping above a waterfall, and it seemed I lost the ability to walk. It healed, but eventually, and in the meantime, I thought about suicide. But after weeks in bed, watching YouTube, I had the flash of an idea to make a video of my own about the Cornish language. And I knew it came from the same place as the primal curiosity my grandpa's atlas ignited in the first place. And I had an answer of how to keep this growing. I would share it with the world in video. This is fun.